This is really hard for me because I'm not used to handling things so long. Welcome to George's Gadgets. Let's go baldly where no one has gone before. I gotta give a shout out to Ohero. He's the one who came up with that and it is gold. I'm gonna use that sparingly because I don't want it to be overused, but this is the perfect time. So this upgrade took a bunch of different parts and a bunch of different tools to work. I started off with the X belt tensioner by Banholm and then I used Pin 13's Tactical X carriage. And that thing is amazing. Basically this video is just gonna go through how I put it all together, the tools and the parts I used, and how you can do it too. So what these two parts do, the X belt tensioner is kind of self-explanatory. It allows you to tighten your belt without having to undo everything and put it back together. And then the tactical X carriage makes your, your hot end carriage modular so that you can remove whatever hot end you have on if you need to do repairs, if you need to clean off the nozzle. And you can also create separate ones so you could swap them back in. It's a super cool upgrade. I totally recommend it. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so these are the different parts that I will need for the the, the Tactical X extruder. Um, I have my JST connectors, some brass knurled inserts, um, various cables so that I can create the correct connections, the ceramic heater for the E3D hot end, and I'm using genuine E3D hot end, but you can get clones off of, off of different websites. I just like E3D, so I want to support them. This is going to be my drag cable, and I'm going to need to model connection for it. And then I have all the different parts for the tactical X that I printed out previously. I might have to reprint a couple of these. I'm also going to be upgrading tensioner, adding a tensioner to the whole get up so that I can tension the cable once it's all said and done. And oh, and the BL touch sensor. So this should be it. This should be the last upgrade. All right, so we're gonna remove the X carriage holder for lack of a better word, but it's basically the, the one that doesn't have the stepper motor attached to it. We're removing this because we're gonna replace it with this part. And so here I'm just showing you that you put the screws on and what I was doing is I was, <laughs> I was doing it while they were attached together. It's better to do them separately, which I end up doing right here, but you put these sliders on first so that you can kind of slide them in. And as I struggle with this. But then you see, you get them on and they, they slide really well. I love how the guy who designed this Banholm, he put the TiVo logo on it. I think it looks really slick, so good job on him. And you can see I'm attaching the two pieces together after the fact of it being on. I use a Harbor Freight screw kit that I, I have, but those are M4 screws. I prefer hex cap M4 screws, but I was working with what I had. So then you replace the wheels back on and make sure that they're, they're nice and snug. Now we're gonna work on assembling the different parts of the X tactical carriage. All right, so to get these in, what you do is you place the brass knurled insert and then you, you put a screw into it and you just screw it until it starts pulling it through. All right, so here I'm just, I'm placing all the knurled inserts where they're required to be. And like I said before, I'm just pulling those in by screwing in a screw. And then you got to remove the old X carriage because that's where we're going to be putting the new one, obviously. And this is me intensely looking at where I placed the Z end stop on the new X carriage. All right, so um, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I, I, have, I didn't work on it as much as I wanted to, but there's a lot of learning involved for me because there's some new parts that I'm using that I've never used before, like these JST connectors. And then also, um, my buddy by Pen Studios, uh, he helped me solder this when I initially got it. I've never soldered a thermal sensor before, so uh, I need to 
basically test on that. I have a couple that I can work on and figure out if I know how to do it or not. But I've set up my workstation because tomorrow I have work, so I set it up so that as soon as I come home, I can start working on it again. All right, so I'm back from work. I decided that I wanted to try and test different soldering techniques that I saw on different YouTube videos. I'll actually link those videos down below so that you guys could see where I was getting the stuff from. The previous solder joints that I've done, they bend a lot, they're kind of blocky. Sometimes they, they broke through the, the heat shrink wrap that I, I had on them, so it didn't work out very well. So I just decided after watching a couple videos of people trying out and, and practicing a bunch, I had some extra wire and, and that's what I wanted to do. These wires are gonna be used for the heater cartridge and I'm just practicing soldering because I didn't want to screw up like I've done on past soldering jobs. So what I do is I just put a little dab of solder on the soldering iron and let the heat disperse and then pull in the rest of the solder. So I'm back for work after working on this for the second day in a row now and I ordered some more parts that I needed. I'm waiting for them to come, but I want to work on the few things that I know I can work on right now. So I haven't calibrated the BL Touch yet, so I can't tell you how good it works. Um, but what you do need to know is that in order for it to work on the TiVo, you need to swap out the pins. And I've included the diagram that I followed to be able to do this correctly. This desk is a wreck. So I'm just gonna go ahead and... Uh... All right, so everything's set up again. What I, what I finally figured out is that I can actually use the wire that came with one of the DuPont connector sets that I, I got. It's a 28 gauge wire, and from what I read online that a lot of people use that. It's really thin, so I'm worried that it might overheat, but I'm gonna test it and see if it works. After waiting and, and buying parts and needing more parts, I'm just gonna try and work on the things that I can. Same thing with my soldering. I decided that I needed to practice crimping before I did the real deal. So I just practiced a ton on all of these different DuPonts and I used just some extra wire and I feel like I'm confident enough to move forward and actually do the real deal. So this is my first time making something like this. Interesting trying to learn how to do it. Let's get started. I'm gonna move on and, and hopefully finish at least the BL Touch connections tonight. This is the hardware, and then these are the tools that you're gonna be using to complete this process. So these are your JST connectors, and they vary just very slightly from the DuPont as they have a mechanism that allows them to be plugged into each other. Female ends will go in here, and then the male ends will go in here. These are your DuPont ones, and the difference is, is that there's no definitive female and male differentiation from the two different parts. Um, what happens is, is when you finish these, the male ends will actually be coming out of the plastic piece and then the female ends will just be on the inside of the, the DuPont and you just plug them straight in. So these are used for your BL Touch and these are used for basically everything else. The entire system is dependent on this because they connect and they hold together really well, but they don't snap and lock like other connections. The example that I'm using here is going to be for the DuPont, but this works for both the JST and the DuPont. The only difference is, is that these wings, instead of being offset, they're kind of identically right next to each other, okay? So this is the female and this is the male end, and this is what they look like when you draw them like kind of zoomed up. Kristen did these for me and I think they look awesome. They're super helpful. So luckily I have an artist for a wife. So when we go to actually crimp something, this is what the tool looks like, right? And you can see there's these little ridges and that's what kind of pushes it in so that it, it clamps onto the, the wire. And then this is what it looks like from the top when you have the actual male end inside the tool. And this is what it would look like from the side. So when you get the tool, there's these ridges that are in there. And what you do is you place the wings of the terminal on the ridge, these wings on the ridge of the tool. And what that does is it makes it so that the part that should not be crimped, see this, this end part that's sticking out? You don't want to bend that. It's the same for this. You don't want to bend it on this either. So here, let's do the female side too. All right, so that sticks out like that. And that makes it so that when you go to plug your male end into the female end, 
This is perfectly untouched and it'll slide right in. I'm not trying to make this sexual, it sounds really sexual. Um, okay, so we have this all set up, right? It's, not, it's sitting on the ledge, it's ready to go, so what's next? So now we need to strip our wire. You wanna make sure that your wire is stripped so that the insulation doesn't pass the wings because that's where the it's gonna grip and then you want your copper to not pass into the terminal. You want it to be pinched inside this, this uh, rectangular section, right? So it's kinda, so this tiny little rectangular section right there is what you want the copper to be in. In order to do that correctly, you kinda measure out or guesstimate where you want the copper part to be and you strip that, all right? I already have one set up and in the hopper ready to go. I'm using a smaller gauge wire, so I'm gonna put it in the smaller gauge tool and you put it so that the opening is facing up, okay? Opening being these wings. These wings are facing up and up on the tool would be where my thumb is. So that's up, all right? And we take our newly stripped wire we slide it into where the terminal is and then bam and that's that's pretty good without like with looking through the camera but you see the insulation is crimped on the first part and then the copper is crimped inside the rectangular part so it looks like this when you zoom up the wings are crimping the insulation and the copper is crimped right there and then you plug it into the connector so after you push in the male end it would look kind of like this and then if you were to push in the female and it would look like that. It's like that. And then you just slide in like that. There you go. That's how you do it. The reason that I paused on this is because I've been working with pre-connected JST terminals and the wire gauge isn't the exact same one that I wanted. To, to fix the issue of having a bunch of different wire gauges throughout this whole printer, I decided to purchase these and I will leave a link in the description below. What this is going to do is it's going to help me connect the hot end and connect the fan and then also the thermistor because the BL touch is done. and. I'm gonna assemble everything and test it out and see if it works today, but I'm just gonna jump into it. I wanna get this done tonight, so here goes day, what is this, four now? Kristen? I don't know, it feels like four. At this point, I felt like I was finally getting to the home stretch, so I was able to work on the hot end. I felt more confident because I had the JST connectors and I didn't have different wire gauges going through. So this is me setting up the E3D hot end. And I eventually changed that because the length of wire that I included was too long and I had to reduce it. But it ended up working out in the end. What I'm really trying to figure out for this thermistor is if I can use the connectors that are already attached to it or if they're too far gone to salvage. I'm trying to, I was trying to get the solder out of it, but I think I'm just going to cut them and then try and re-terminal them. So I messed up that one. Uh, luckily I have a spare because I had two hot ends, but I'm gonna use this one now. I'm just moving on. Hot end part, I finally got it finished. This is it. Got the BL touch on there. I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna set up the harness right now and I'm gonna make sure that all the wires are, are good. What's super cool about this design is that the JST connectors, they hold the hot end in place. So you would think that it would be really flimsy and might move around, but that's a pretty solid connection and they, and they hold it in really well. I'll show that at the end of the video so you can get a better look. But this is me just setting up the, the carriage, making sure that the wires are long enough and that everything moves around smoothly. Yo, this is it, this is the end of it. So uh, I'm putting on the cable, the cable, I'm gonna put on the cable chain. I'm gonna 
put electric tape around this this little fan piece um, so that it can actually stick inside the place that's supposed to because right now it just falls out. That's it, I'm gonna stop the video here because this has been an insane amount of work actually. So the last video in the TiVo series, I thought it was gonna be this, but the actual last video is going to be me flashing the firmware and doing the first print. So that will be for a later one, but as for now, we're almost finished. Let's get back to it. I am sure that there is a better way to route these cables. I just was not aware of it and I did it the most difficult way I could think of. Oh man, you want to hear something hilarious? All of these are in backwards. I just finished. They're all in completely backwards. Can I cut the sides? No. Is it going to be? It should be fine. Like the order that you've chosen, Treasure, you're going to lead off. Then Sebastian, you'll be in the middle. And of you're going to take us over. This is coming together so cool, huh? Yeah. This looks cool with all the wires in it. Yeah. I like it. There we go. All right. Lots of focus. I followed the old TiVo directions on, on where to plug everything in. They actually updated their video, so it's a lot better now. All right, pardon the mess, everyone. Uh, this has been a long four days, so everything's just kind of everywhere. Over right here. All right, everything seems to be Powered on. All right, so the coolest part about this whole thing is you can create different hot ends so that you can plug them, or the, so that you can plug them and unplug them. And that was just really hard to take out. But basically, this comes off, right? That's what kind of holds it in. And then this just snaps off. Boom! And then if I had another hot end, I could plug it back on just as easy like this. Push it. I don't want to break it. That'd be really funny actually if I was recording and then it just broke. And then that goes in there like that. Boom! All right, I had a ton of fun filming this with you guys and it took me a long time, but we got through it and if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. All the stuff that I've used, I have links down below, all the different parts, um, all the things that I've printed out, any tools that I've used are all down below. So if you need them or you wanna try this out yourselves, go check that out. We've really been grow growing as a community and I appreciate everyone leaving comments and encouraging me to keep making videos. I apologize that this one took so long. It uh, was a pain in the butt to do, but we made it through. I'll see you guys next time. I really appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and let me know what you think.